a dog, and a turkey? Who would have ever thought these two wildly different creatures might have anything to talk about, let alone understand each other? They might look like they're arguing, but it's actually more like two siblings bickering. How did these two peas in a pod find themselves in the same home? It's quite a tale. Let's start with Blossom, a broad-breasted white turkey who is destined to be the main chorus at someone's Thanksgiving. For her first five weeks of life, this little bird grew up with hundreds of other chicks on a brood farm. When the turkeys were sent off for the next stage to be fattened up, Blossom was somehow left behind. The farmer's daughter found her and pleaded for Little Blossom's life to be spared. They gave her to an animal shelter where Deputy Director Abby Hubbard offered to give her a home. But there was one potential hurdle to overcome. Abby's dog, Minnow. I wasn't worried about how Minnow would view Blossom. I just wasn't sure what Blossom would think of Minnow. My first interactions with Blossom were at our animal shelter, and she was terrified. This is the moment that Blossom arrived at our home. Minnow walked right up, and Blossom saw her, and she was instantly comfortable with her. It didn't take long for Blossom to find her comfort zone in her new surroundings. She wasted no time claiming Minnow's bed as her own. As you can see, their friendship was quick to blossom. She just seemed like a different bird at that point. So this is their first cuddle. It was another moment for Blossom where she really relaxed. Now you might be wondering, do turkeys make for good house pets? The answer is a pretty hard no, most of the time. They're impossible to house train and typically only bond with other turkeys. When she came into our family, she was right for learning. But Minnow had a special touch. We might never know why, but it could have had something to do with her own origin story. <coughs> Minnow was born on a dog meat farm in South Korea. Along with 22 others, she too was destined to become food. But before she was slaughtered, the Humane Society of the United States swooped in and rescued her and her pals as they shut down the farm. Only five months old at the time, her life would have turned out a whole lot differently. She was quite fearful when she arrived at our shelter uh, for adoption, and I just immediately fell in love with her. And because I like working with fearful animals, um, I felt particularly drawn to helping her. She knows she's safe and loved, and now a very important member of a family. It was quite special that what I had been able to do for Minnow, Minnow had then been able to do for Blossom in making her comfortable in our home. Like any siblings, they squabble sometimes, sure. Minnow can be protective of her toys, and Blossom's somewhat of an antagonist. It's kind of like the way my little brother teased me. Blossom likes to put up a bit of a fight. And so then she'll get worked up and you'll see her feathers puff up and she'll kind of arch her neck and um, make her little turkey warning sounds. Minnow's put up with a lot. I think she's come to understand that that's how Blossom communicates and she tolerates it. And it's all part of being in a relationship, right? Come on, Blossom. <laughs> Come on! Minnow takes her role seriously. Blossom can get scared from time to time. See that vulture overhead? Has her shaking in her feathers. She often looks to the sky. She's worried about the birds of prey, which is typical. It's an instinct. Are you showing Bloss what to do? But Minnow's instinct is to have her pals back at all times. Minnow has always been really good at kind of sensing what Blossom needs and being a security blanket for her. This family's first Thanksgiving was as special as any you could be invited to. And rather than be served as dinner, these two lucky ducks were just served dinner as VIPs. That was it, it was a done deal. She was home, she was part of our family and <laughs> I think we were all just <laughs> as thrilled as could be. In most places, 
pigs and dogs don't often get to spend quality time together. But this place? It's not most places. Welcome to Pigtail Acres in Alberta, Canada. It's home to Jody and Jim Jordan. The Jordans have dedicated their life and home to these so-called mini pigs. When their owners realized they got more than they bargained for, like way more, Jody and Jim roll out the welcome mat. But in some cases, the piglets never reach their weight potential. Like one-year-old Lotus, born with a serious neurological condition. She's had health issues right from the get-go. She was having seizures, spinning around in circles, um, some anxiety, just lots of oddities. She was only three months old when she was rejected by her siblings. Her owners needed to find a better situation, and they found out about Pigtail Acres. But it wasn't smooth sailing from there. Lotus's compulsion to run around in circles persisted. She could never really settle. So we started talking to vets and different people and trying to figure out what was going on. The diagnosis? Lotus was apparently recovering from meningitis, a bacterial infection of the brain that can be fatal. It's somewhat common among young pigs and calls for long-term care and long-term medication. Everybody we talked to said that having the meningitis as a piglet may have left some permanent neurological uh, damage which was causing seizures and just the odd, the odd behaviors. The hope was that the other pigs would take to her, but her size and her odd behaviors kept her on the outside looking in. She never really fit into that herd. Pigs being a herd animal, she just never really fit into that. We were starting to be concerned. If she's not happy and content, then you need to think humanely, right? And not just keeping her around because she's a cute little piglet. The decision to put Lotus down in order to spare her from continued suffering was at their door. But then, in walked Berlin, an 11-month-old St. Bernard Bernese mountain dog. Berlin came in and we do have two other little Yorkies who are older and weren't accepting of Berlin, um, so we had pigs that didn't like the odd out pig and we had dogs that didn't like the odd out dog. The outcasts took to each other almost instantly and never let go. So they kind of come together and we started seeing them sleeping in the bed together and playing. As the months went on and as Berlin grew bigger, Jody and Jim started noticing Lotus changing too. We noticed Lotus was calming down and, and starting to just be a little bit more relaxed and actually sleep at night, um, not up till two or three in the morning pacing the floors. She's just developed some calmness to her. And we, we really do believe that um, Berlin has been, been a big part of that for her. <laughs> Pigs are among the most intelligent animals we've studied, and with that comes a need for mental and physical stimulation. So Jody and Jim have set up a piggy obstacle course. Touch, touch. Old Smudge oh here's got the hang of it. Oh boy. How about Lotus? Lotus, touch. Good girl, come on. Oh, good girl, Lotus. Lotus's neurological condition presents an added challenge with exercises like these. But that's where her BFF steps in. It looks like Lotus will follow Berlin. So it looks like maybe Berlin will be a, a good support for teaching Lotus to do agility. Going on? Good girl. Come on, Berlin, come. Our hope is that Lotus is in a good place and, and they can have the next few years to continue their friendship. What's one best friend without the other? Lucky little Lotus.